The story was told to me in this way. The young woman said, I woke up with a start. My heart was racing. It was the middle of the night. I tried to get back to sleep, but I just couldn't. 
My thoughts were just working overtime. And I could hear myself saying, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't do that. But if I back out, people will, will think less of me. Oh, I don't care what people think of me. I can't do it. I'm going to make a fool of myself. I should never have agreed to do this. It's too difficult. It's outside of my realm of expertise. Why did I ever say yes? And as she had this conversation with herself back and forth in the middle of the night, she suddenly looked and saw that it, the light was coming through the window, that it had turned to dawn, and that everything looked different in the daylight. Everything looked softer and brighter. I felt calmer, she noted. I was no longer frightened. And as I began to recall other times when I had been given tasks like the one I was you know, struggling with, I realized that I had done this and I could do it. And I had those skills and I was gonna use them. Do you think that you could ever put yourself in that situation, pacing the floor in the middle of the night? You're racked with worry or anxiety or doubt. Like, how am I going to face my supervisor? How am I going to handle this assignment? What will I tell the children? Have you ever been held captive by those terrors that strike in the deep dark of the middle night? And then, have you ever experienced the change as you see the light coming up, as you see the sun come up over the horizon, and suddenly you have some hope. There is a little more sanity to your thinking as the dawn pushes the darkness away. My mother was a great nighttime worrier. She would uh, tell me later when I would talk with her on the telephone, I paced the floors all night, Joanne, paced the floors all night worrying about you, your brother, your fam, whatever, okay? It, it, they were it was a genuine concern on her part, but you know, you just got to feeling almost strangled by it in that I would say, Mom, you don't have to worry, I'm fine. I'm okay, everything's all right. But it was that, that sense that she wasn't there and maybe something was going to happen to one of us and she wouldn't be there to protect us. Maybe you've had those kinds of night terrors in which you, uh, you walk the floor, you worry about a child, you know, you worry about something going on, you worry about the state of the world and maybe you are pacing that floor back and forth and then suddenly it's dawn and you're not nearly as afraid nor are you nearly as caught up in it because light takes away all the shadowy aspects of things and allows us to put things in their proper perspective. I always like the verse from the psalmist that was read this morning. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. I too had spent my time pacing the floors, and when I found this scripture reading, it just really helped me to understand so much more clearly that there is a God who watches out for me and for you. And so the light reminds me that God is there in the midst of all of our pain and suffering and our confusion. 
suddenly we see that we can Sur we, the insurmountable problems may not be quite so insurmountable after all. Our scripture lesson this morning focuses on God's call to Jeremiah. If you know anything about the prophet Jeremiah, you know his life was not an easy one. He was called by God to speak his word to the nations and all the people wanted to do was to kill Jeremiah, and they were almost successful a couple different times. That was the response that he got when he tried to tell them that God wanted them to come back to him, that God wanted the people to really be the people in all of their goodness and purity, and that somehow they had strayed so far away and in their straying so far away, when they heard the voice of God, they could hardly believe it. And so they went after the messenger. And you know the old saying, you know, don't shoot the messenger. Well, believe me, they seriously tried to shoot, well, they tried to take um, Jeremiah out. Um, he was not at all welcome most anywhere. And so you hear those words, that little conversation that was read where God says, Jeremiah, I call you. And Jeremiah says, you can't call me. I don't know how to speak. I'm just a kid. I, I have no life experiences. What makes you think anybody's going to listen to me? And God just absolutely refuses to buy into that. God says, oh, no, oh, no we've been there. We've been there. We're past it. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. Those two statements really reveal to us exactly how God feels about each one of us. We can put up our hands and we can say no thanks and all this other stuff, but God says before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You were a thought, just a thought in my mind. And then you came into being. And I stayed with you in all of that. Because I consecrated you. I made you holy. As holy as a person can be. And so Jeremiah accepts the call, and he sets out. And he sets out to bring the people back into the fold. But he has a lot of trouble with all of that. But he never gives up. He continues on. He finds a way in which to do God's work. And those words, as I've said, are reflective of our lives as well. Because we too were just a thought in God's mind. And before we existed, God knew us. But when we have that tendency to feel all alone, abandoned, there's no one there that understands us, no one to give us a hand, no one to give us an encouraging word. The first thing people want to say is, well, where is God in all of this? Well, where is God? We need to see that that's not the question to ask. It's less about where God is and more about where are we in understanding the God that is omnipotent, the God who is here for each and every one of us all the time. And so we have to answer the question, knowing that God is here for us, will we answer 
God's call? Will we respond when God asks us to develop a talent and to share that talent? Will we be there when God says, please go and help build houses? Will we be willing to say, okay, well, I'm not so good with a, na a nail and a hammer, but I'll try. It's so much easier to ask sort of existential questions when God wants us to do something that we don't want to do. You know, that's when we say, well, how do I know it's from God? Where is God? You know, we ask these things and everybody goes, wow, that's pretty, that's clever. That's interesting. But by and large, that's just us pushing God away saying, oh, I don't think I want to step out. I don't think I want to try that. I'm too afraid. And so we sometimes ignore the call, and maybe we just brush it off, or maybe we just keep moving because a moving target is harder to hit. And sometimes we define call as something that is way beyond anything that you or I might conceivably do. You know, called by God, well, that must be uh, Mother Teresa or uh, Martin Luther King Jr. or Joan of Arc or Moses or Abraham or Peter, Paul. God doesn't call me to that kind of work and that kind of ministry. God doesn't expect that from just little old me. How can I possibly risk the way they risk? How can I serve as they have served? How can I have an impact on the world in which these people have had an impact on the world? See, it's so easy, right? You now just talk yourself right out of doing anything God has asked you to do because you're never going to reach the levels of expectation and performance that some of the other saints that we've known in our lifetimes and before have done. But I'm going to ask you to do something instead of pushing God away or making excuses or pretending you didn't hear or whatever it is or giving into your fears. These words that God spoke to Jeremiah create a special relationship between God and Jeremiah. The call of God becomes understood in a more personal way. And the call of God can't be so easily dismissed because it's understood as you and God. Not all of us urging you for something but God asking you to step out. And if we don't take this seriously, we are going to find ourselves so devoid of life and energy and faithfulness that we're going to be just all shriveled up inside. I mean, there are people who've said, I couldn't have faced that tragedy without my faith. I don't know how people who have no faith get by. There is that awareness that there is a God and that God knows us, calls us by name, and stands with us when we are asked to step forward. It's an awareness, and that is God's first call to us to be aware that God may be, you know, tapping you on the shoulder, or God may literally have something come down right in front of you so that you can't move forward or backwards, and you have to just stand perfectly still and take that in and consider, oh my goodness, here I am. Is, am I supposed to learn something from this? Why has this happened? We can't just dismiss those things. We have to actually think about 
your relationship with God and is God trying to tell you something at this t in this time and in this place? When we are aware of our relationship with God, our lives take on a new hue, they take on a new direction, they take on new energy and spirit. It's because we plant seeds of spirituality and then our lives unfold. And then the deeper truths may be revealed. And when the deeper truths are revealed, my friends, that's when the burdens start to show up. Because it's real easy to just say Jesus loves me, but it's another thing to act as Jesus' emissary when there is a problem or there is injustice. The awareness enables us to handle situations that would seemingly overwhelm us. The expected death, a sudden divorce, a family scandal, addictive disease, We can handle all these things and not be drowning in our own pain and in our own uh, fears if we know that God is there with us. And so that call is not just a call to serve, but it's a call of recognition and awareness. And we need all of those parts together to give us a relationship with God. It helps us to heal. And so we heal instead of being divisive and you know, uh, pulling the scab off of the wound. We become compassionate instead of calculating. When you turn on the television set and you see all the atrocities that they are so willing to just really spread out before us in all of its goriness, you can see that there is definitely evil at work in the world. I've talked about this before. And we have to be able to look at all of that and not literally be um, decimated and destroyed. We have to have the strength to recognize that these situations exist and that we are called in some way or another to stand up to them. But also we're not alone when we do this. We have the presence of God in our lives. We must not shut God out or shut God down because God is there for us. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. And so you see, the call comes to each and every one of us on many levels. Just as the call came to those whom we hold up as models of loving kindness and godliness. And the call came to Jeremiah, and that call is ours as well. And so your homework is for you to listen, listen for the call. And if you hear that call, how will you respond? Think about that. Think about the ways in which God enters your life on a daily basis. And take it seriously. For they say, do not be afraid. 
for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Amen. Deliver us from evil. 